Hey guys, welcome back to another Manager and Four tutorial. And today's video is going to be part one of a new series I'm doing of how to create an advanced keycard system in Unreal Engine 4. And so in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is just setting up the door blueprint, but this is going to be quite a complex door blueprint as we can change the static mesh here. So I can change it to a cone if I wanted. I don't, but I can, but I want it to be a cube. I can also change the material of this if I wanted to do. So I could change it to a glass material. Again, obviously I don't, so I want it as this. But then we can also change the color of this door. So I want it to be red for a red key card. I want it to be blue for a blue key card, green for a green key card. You can change it to any color you want. And then what was also going to happen is if we walk into the door, I haven't picked up a key card. So it's going to tell me you need to find the correct key card first. But when we do set up the key card, when we pick it up, it will open, which we also set up the opening in this as well. So this idea was also made from someone with my Discord server called Asmund, who's really helped me out here. I made a video on this. He then took that and improved upon it and adapted it. He then showed me that and I took it again and once again improved and adapted upon it. So we've kind of both worked together to make this cool concept here. And he has made the static meshes for the key cards and the icons on the screen as well. So a big thank you to him. But I will show you how to create all this now. So I'll just delete everything and get right into it. So now that I've done that, what our first step is going to be is to create our door blueprint. So I'm just going to do that here. Well, I'll make a new folder to keep this a bit more organized. So I'll just call this one door BP. You can name this whatever you like. And then what I'm going to do in here is right click, create a blueprint class, make this an actor. And once again, I'm just going to call this one door BP. You can name it whatever you like. And I'm going to open that up. And then in here, what I'm going to do is add a component. I'm going to add a static mesh. So that's static mesh like so. And then I'm going to make this one the cube. So just one meter cube like that. You can make this whatever you like and you can make it an actual door. And it doesn't need to slide down like I made it in the overview but obviously make this whatever you like this is just our door and also in here what I'm going to do is add another component add a box collision and then I'm just going to scale this up so it fits around this cube like so and this is just so that the player can collide with it a lot easier so that is what I'm going to do make it as tight a fit as you want or as big as you want this just basically means when the player walks into it it's going to fire off so those are the components we need what I'm going to do is compile and go to the event graph like so and delete these nodes here then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a custom event to do this so I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a custom event like so. And I'm just going to call this one open door. You can name this whatever you like, but obviously we're doing this to open the door. Out of this, what I'm going to do is get a play sound at location. The sound will be a sound key that we'll make in a second. And the location will be get actor location like so. I'm also just going to open that up to get the advanced settings there as we're going to use those in a minute. So like I say, we're going to make this sound cue now. So if we minimize this and if I right click, get sounds sound cue i'm just going to call this one door opening cue you name that whatever you like and open that up straight away then i'm just going to minimize that like so and then find the sound that i want so for me this is going to be this opening door here so just drag and drop it in maximize that again and just plug that to the output like so and the reason we're doing this in the sound cue is so that it does keep the location so if we move away from it it will sound a lot better than it just being everywhere so now if we deselect that so we're still in here what I'm going to do is change the volume multiplier to be 5. And the reason I'm doing this is just because this specific sound is a little bit quiet, but you can set this to whatever you like. And also, I'll be leaving the download link to the sounds and the static meshes all down below in the description. So you can use the exact same ones I am. So if you are using mine, I'd recommend this setting here. Then we can save and close that like so. Then here, in the start time, I'm going to set this to 0 0.8, as there's a bit of a gap at the start of this, so I want to just skip that and go straight into opening the door sound effect. So this here is going to work perfectly. Then, after this play sound location, what I'm going to do is add a timeline, like so, add timeline. I'm just going to call this one door open. You can name this whatever you like. And that's going to go into play from start, not play. It can be play as well, but play from start is usually just means there's less likely chance to be a bug or have it glitch out a bit. So once you've done that, you can double click to open it up and we're going to add a float track on the top left up here. And I'm just going to call this open door track. Name this whatever you like. It doesn't matter too much. The length is how long it's going to take to open the door. So I want that to be three. So it would take three seconds. Again, put this as whatever you like and customize this completely for you. Then I'm going to right click in here, add a key with time zero value zero. Right click, add another key with time 3, so the maximum length of your timeline, and value of 1. Press these two little arrows here to fit it like so. And that is now that part done, so we can close that and go back to the event graph like so. And then what we want to do is create two variables for the start and end locations, or the open and close locations. So to do that, we're going to hit the plus variable here, and then I'm going to call this one closed, and I'm going to make it a vector, and then I'm going to get another one, 
call it open also being a vector. And we can compile that so we can change the default values. If we go back over to the port like so, what we can see is that the closed is where we want it to be now. So closed is going to be 0, 0, 0. And then what I'm also going to do to find the open is actually put this in my world and move it to find what I would like it to be. So what I'm going to do is just drag and drop this door BP in here, scale it up to how I want as well, and then move it for where I want. So I'm just going to be using the location and scale that I got earlier for this specific door anyway. So it's going to be minus 1550, 1475, 470. Obviously yours will be different as you'll have it in different places and all this good stuff, but just scale it up to how big you'd like it to be. Then I want it to be 6.25, 1, 7.25. Scale it down on the Y a bit as well, just to get it like that. Maybe move it up a bit. So that works for me. Again, do this completely for you. And then what I'm going to do is back in the blueprint here, I'm just going to move this all down until I get it to where I want. So I think that's going to be a good position for me. And so that is minus 110 on the Z, as you can see just underneath my mouse cursor there. So I move that back to zero and then I just can do that. So maximize this again. And then go into the open and just put it as minus 110 on the Z like so. Now we can do this with a float, but I'm doing it like this because if you then want to drag it to the side, you can do the same thing. If you want to move it up, you can do the same thing, move it backwards. It's all the same process. You just move this to where you want it to be. And if you want to also add rotation, you could do that with a transform instead. So if I change this to transform, but you can change the location, rotation, and scale like so. But I'm just going to be doing location for the moment. So once you've got that, if we go back over to the event graph here, out of the open door track, what we're going to do is get a lerp vector, like so, with A is going to be our closed vector, like so, and B is going to be our open. So this timeline is going to go between our closed and open locations, like so. Then we're going to get a reference to our static mesh, so drag and drop that in up there. So this is going to be our door. Come out of that, we're going to set relative location, so set relative location like that, and put that into the update. The new location is going to be a return value from this lerp. So when this timeline is playing, it's going to be moving our door between these two locations. And so that is basically how we're going to open our door. So obviously we haven't set up calling it yet, but when we do, this will work. Also actually in this place on location, I didn't put it in. So let me just make sure to do that door opening queue like so. And then the next step is going to be to go into our character blueprint. So for me, that's third person. So I'm going to minimize this and go to content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you this could be first, third, or whatever you've named it. And then all I'm going to do here for the moment is create a new variable, so hit plus variable here. I'm just going to call this one key cards. So we call that key cards like so, make it a boolean, but then change it to an array. So select this little icon next to boolean there and change it to an array, which is the three by three grid like so. Compile that and we're just going to tick instance editable and then we want to set the amount of key cards we want. So for this example, I want to have three key cards, so I'm going to add three array elements. If you want one key card, put one in there. If you want five, put five elements. This is just how many key cards you want to have. So set that like so. And then we can compile and save that. And that is all we need to do in there for the moment, but we'll come back here later. And then we're gonna go back to our door blueprint here, and we're gonna come down, find some space, select our box collision up in the top left, right click on it, add event, add on component, begin overlap, like so. The other actor of this, we're going to cast to our character. So for me, that's third person character. But again, for you, this could be third, first, or if you named it. So this basically means when our character runs into the box collision here, it's gonna fire off. Out of this, we're going to get a do once, so hold down O, left click, get a do once, and plug that in there, like so. We'll get the reset later on. Then, as third person character, what we want to do is get key cards. So we're going to get this array that we've just made, like so. And out of this array here, what we want to do is go into a for each loop with break, like that. The execution going to completed of the do once, like so. So what this is going to do is it's going to go through a loop of each element in this array. So for this loop body, when we're going through the elements, what we want to do is basically see if the current keycard value, so the current keycard we're checking, is true. If it's true, that means the player's picked it up. So to do that, we're going to go out of array element, we're going to get an AND boolean. So if this is true. And then the array index, what we want to do is see if this is equal to the keycard value. So to do that, we're going to create a plus variable here again, and I'm going to call this one keycard value. I'm going to change this to be an integer like so, which essentially this is just going to be the current value for this key card. So key card zero for door zero, instead of using colors in the coding, we're using numbers. And this again needs to be instance editable. So we can just hit this little eye here and this just means the player can change it. So they can set which value they want for this door. So which key card it is. Compile that, we're going to drag and drop that in like so. By default, I'm going to leave it as zero. And we're going to drag out of this and we're going to get an equal equal. So equal and equal integer, I'll plug that on the bottom, plug the top one into array index, 
and plug that into the AND boolean there. So essentially what this is going to do is for each element it's going to check to see if that element in the array equals true and the keycard value is also equal to the array index then obviously we have the correct keycard for the correct door. So if we do we want to go into a branch. So we get hold down B, left click, get a branch, plug that into the loop body, plug the condition of the AND in there. Out of this what we're going to do is we're just going to call function open door like so. So this is how we can open the door. So basically if the player has a key card and it's equal to the correct key card for this door, it's going to open the door. But if they don't, so if we hold on B, left click and get another branch, plug the condition of that AND in there, and then this is going to go into the completed of the loop there. So out of the completed of the for loop, we're going to go into this branch and also this call function here is going to go into the break of the loop like so. I'm going to double click this to get some reroute nodes just to make it look cleaner easier to read like that. And this branch here is essentially checking to see if we don't have the key card, it's going to tell the player that. The reason we're not doing it off of this false is because otherwise it will do it each and every time. So if we have key card two but not one, it will tell us we don't have it as we don't have the one it checks beforehand, which is why we're doing it here off of completed instead. So out of the false of this, we're going to hold down S, left click to get a sequence. Again, that's going to false. Then one is going to go into another do once. So hold down O, left click, get a do once. That goes into then zero then one is going to go into the reset of this first do once that we made up here straight after the cast so that way once this is completed if we don't have it we can do it again so again i'm going to double click these to add reroute nodes again to make it neater so there we go and now straight after this do once again we're going to create a widget to tell the player so i've completed we're going to create widget like so the class will create in a minute return value we're going to add to viewport like so then after a delay, so hold on D, left click, get a delay. This is how long it's gonna be on the screen for. So I want this to be four seconds. So I'll set it to a duration of four like that. We're gonna come out the return value of the create widget again. And we're going to remove from parents like so, plug that into the completed of the delay. So essentially what it's doing is if we don't have the correct key card, it's gonna put a widget on screen telling the player where they don't have a correct key card. Four seconds later, it's gonna come off the screen. And then out of this remove from parent, we're gonna go into the reset of the do once like so, so we can do it again if we don't have the correct key card. And once again, I'm gonna reroute these to make it look nicer. And so now let's create that widget. So if we just minimize this and then go into our key card folder, I'm gonna do this in. If I right click, and uh, these are just the meshes and images that I have, which are in the link in the description down below. So don't worry if you don't have those in the moment, you do have access to them. So I'm gonna right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint, and I'm gonna call this one wrong or no key card. Name this one if you like, but that makes the most sense to me. I'm gonna open that up straight away. All I'm gonna do in here is just add some text. So I'm gonna drag and drop some text in here, tick size to content, and then in this, I'm just gonna write, you need to find the correct key card first, like so. So the player knows they need to get the correct key card. So that works like so. I'll just make this a little bigger, maybe a font of 30, like so. And I'll anchor it down to the bottom middle, like so, so it doesn't move out of position. So I think that's gonna be good. So I compile, save, and close that straight away. Then if I go back to the door blueprint, I can just press this little arrow here and put that widget in there like so. If that didn't work, just select none and search for it to put it in like that. And so now what this is gonna do is essentially, if the player walks into the door, if they have the correct key card for this door, it's gonna open. If they don't, it will tell the player that they don't have the right key card and that they need to find it. Then what we also want to do is if they use this key card, we want to set it to false. So we want to set it to false so that they no longer have the key card as they've used it. If you don't want to do that, then don't follow this step here. But if you do want to make it so the key card is a one-time use, do this as well. So out of the finished of this timeline up here, what I'm gonna do is get a delay, like so. Get a delay out of that, and I'm gonna set this to one second. So one second after the timeline is finished, it's gonna do this. Set this to be whatever you like, or don't put the delay in at all if you don't want. Then out of the key cards down here, so where we have as third person character, we're getting the key cards array. What I'm gonna do is come out of that array I'm just going to set array element like so, plug that into the completed of there like that. I'll just reroute this like so. The index, what this is going to be is the key card value, so plug that in there. So what it's going to do is set this current key card to false. So we'll leave the rest like that. So item is unticked, so it's false. So we're setting this one to be false so we no longer have the key card. And that is all we need to do there, meaning we can't use another door with the same key card if we have the same value. But again, if you want the key card to be multi-time use, don't do that. And then we compile and save that. And then one final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the construction script here. And this is so we can set the door to have different colors. And also you can change the static mesh if you want. So each door looks different. So it's easier for the player to tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a reference to the static mesh up here. So drag and drop that in 
like that. Out of this, I'm going to set static mesh. So we set static mesh, the blue function there, plug that in like that. New mesh, I'm going to right click promote to variable, and I'm just going to call this door mesh or static mesh or anything like that and put it down there. Compile and set the default value to the door that you have. So for me, that's the cube, but this could be an actual door for you if you want. And then if we tick instance editable up here or the little eye next to the variable there, this means that you can change it real time by just selecting the door. So each door can be different. Then what we want to do is create a material so they can change the color of this. So what I'm gonna do is come out of this. I want to create dynamic material instance. So create dynamic material instance like that. Target is gonna be the static mesh up there. The source material, I'm gonna right click, promote to variable and call this one material like that. And we'll again, click the eye there to make it editable. And then I'll create this in a minute. Optional name, we can leave as non, element index it can be zero as well. So then compile, and I'm gonna create this material now as well. So if we minimize this, what I'm gonna do is back in the door blueprint here, I'm gonna right click, create a material, and I'm gonna call this one dynamic door mat like that. Name it whatever you like, but open it up straight away. In here, we want to right click and get a vector parameter like so. Vector parameter, I'm gonna call this one color. Remember what you've named it and how you've named it as well. So that's why I'm leaving it very simple as color and plug that into the base color like so. So now you can set this to a default color if you want. I'm gonna leave it as black just so that we know. And I'm gonna apply and save that and we can close it as well. And then back in the door blueprint here, this material, what I'm gonna actually do before that is minimize this, right click the material, create material instance like that. And now with that still selected, go back to the blueprint. In this material variable here, click the arrow, so now we have this material instance like so. Out of the return value of this, create a dynamic material instance, what we want to do is set vector parameter value. And this is why we need to remember what it was. So the parameter name I had as color like so. Set this to be whatever you like. Right click the value, promote to variable once again. And I'm gonna call this one color like so. And again, instance editable like that. Compile and you can set the value. So this again means that you can change the colors of each different door in the level so each one has a different color. Then back out of the static mesh again up here, I want to set material, so set material, plug that in there like so. Element index is zero again, and the material is the return value of this create dynamic material instance like so. And this just means the player can change it. So compile and save that, minimize, and I'll show you what this will do. So if we have the door selected here, what we can do is we can change the static mesh here and the material as well. And we can also just change the color very easily like so. So it can be red, blue, green, yellow, anything like that. I want this first one to be red. So I'm gonna press that and hit okay. And then also if we hit play, since we don't have the red key card to be able to pick this up yet as we haven't set it up, which we'll do in the next episode, we see that if we walk into it, it's gonna say you'll need to find the correct key card first. If we walk into it, it'll keep saying this as we don't have one yet. So again, we'll set up that key card in the next episode to be able to then open this door. But like I say, what we can do here is just change the color of this door to be whatever we like. And if we can see that when we walk into it, we're not gonna be able to open it like so, and it's gonna tell us that we need to find the correct key card. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've managed to set up our door blueprint so that we can open up our door if we have the correct key card. So when we walk into it, it's gonna see if we have the key card. If we do, it's gonna open and set the key card to false so we don't have it anymore, which again, you can change. But if we don't have it, which obviously we don't at the moment as we haven't set it up yet, it's gonna tell us that we need to find it. And we've also set it up so we can change the color, static mesh and material of this very easily. And make sure to watch the next episode where we're gonna be setting up the key card to be able to open up the door as well. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.